Hello there. It's a teeny tiny control panel. Why? Because today's episode, we're going to be scratch building the control panel store as seen in Andor, along with a custom B2 Emo. Let's check out the build. This is me. And I'm in a rush. Because it's Andor time. Andor, the show that takes 46 years of accepted Star Wars visuals, chucks them in a food blender with a good slice of planet Earth and out pops something entirely new, and I love it. A show where the common Earth brick isn't just an Earth brick, it's a Star Wars brick. In fact, I was so taken by the use of these bricks, yet still achieving a Star Wars look, that I knew I had to scratch build my own little slice. As you know, there's lots I love about Star Wars. I love a good control panel, so I was completely blown away when Andor was stood outside a control panel store. So yeah, that's what I'm building. The stuff you can see me shaping and cutting here is insulation foam board. It's awesome for making dioramas. It's a bit messy, but you can get some awesome results fast. It's soft enough to allow you to imprint details with very little pressure. As you can see, this stuff is so easy to sand, but of course generates a lot of dust, so make sure you're wearing a mask. These pieces are all made from brick, and to achieve that effect, I'm actually just drawing the patterns of bricks onto the foam with a small metal spray paint clamping rod. A pencil or a pen would also do the trick. One of the many benefits of using this foam board is that it doesn't melt when you're using hot glue. And I love using hot glue, but comments telling me otherwise amuse me. I grabbed me some Vallejo ground texture. This was a fun time slapping this all over my MDF base. As I'm making this diorama for Black Series scale, I wanted to achieve the correct proportions of detail on the ground, so I dabbed my finger repeatedly over the entire area to create micro raised areas, which gives the impression of fine dirt and sand. I was sure to blend this out around the storefront as I would later be adding some shelving that I wanted to sit straight once installed. Continuing to build on my use of the airbrush, I added a zenithal highlight to the entire diorama. I then airbrushed a light and burnt umber layer to the bricks. I made sure I sprayed the bricks from above, so that the darker areas that I'd sprayed previously remain in the cracks between the bricks. This really makes the shapes of the bricks pop. I used colour pigments and a makeup brush to achieve the various earth tones on the street and the darker areas around the bases of the buildings and the steps. To give the impression of depth within the building, I painted the back wall black and doled this down with some darker pigment. To highlight the structure of the bricks even further, I applied a dry brush layer using a lighter tan colour. This technique applies a small amount of paint to the raised areas helping to sell the effect of micro detail and wear and tear on the building. All in all, I gotta say, I was happy with that. Okay. We all know it wouldn't be Star Wars without some Greeblies. So, here they are. And because I love making things hard for myself, I used some more hot glue. And because obviously that was completely ineffective, I used some super glue. I 3D modelled and 3D printed some control panels. I know I said scratch built, well technically the diorama is scratch built, 
but I really wanted to get some specific ideas that were inspired by the show onto my 3D printer. And I'll tell you what, this part is something I've never done before, but I enjoyed it so much. Micro painting. Wowzers. When I 3D modeled these little guys, I didn't really have any ideas in my head. I just had a little bit of reference from the show, but just let my mind wander whilst I was in my 3D editor. And out popped all these different tiny TV monitors. I guess they look a little bit retro, but they seem to fit the diorama really well. This panel was the hero panel. It's gonna take center stage in the diorama. So I'd spend a little bit more time painting this one. I didn't mean to do it. But these shelves and these monitors that I've modelled snapped me right back to my childhood where I would stare through the electrical store windows at all those beautifully retro, portable CRTV screens. I was inspired by the data panel's shop on the show. It only appeared on screen for a few seconds, but it had many weird and wonderful panel designs hanging down from the walls. To achieve the same look, I used solder. It was easy to bend around the various shapes to keep them in place.
So, as I was coming to the end of the detailing of the diorama itself, I realised I needed a droid to set the scene off. So, I modelled none other than B2 Emo, the new droid for Mandor. Well guys, I can safely say that this felt like a massive project. Lots of firsts for me, I've never made a diorama with brick details, I've never modelled such tiny control panels. However, I had a blast pulling this all together. All of the files you've seen in this episode are available over on the Rebel Base Build Patreon, where you will find many other inspired designs. As always guys, thanks for watching, catch you next time.